Marcus Conti reporting. Actually asking asking y'all for a favor because I'm trying to figure something out. I'm 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 in a place in a political place where I'm I'm kind of confused. I don't I don't understand. I don't understand what's happening in the world around me. I see a, a I see truth. I see truth spewing, but I don't see I don't see people's ability to grab it. I, I don't I don't I don't understand, right? And I'm talking about the twenty twenty election, right? So so one Bernie Sanders, I know Bernie Sanders, half the crowd thinks that Bernie Sanders, oh he's a sellout. He sold out, he let Hillary fuck his ass. And uh, he took the money, and he bought himself twelve mansions in the Hamptons, and and his wife's a crooked fraud, and all fucking. Right. So that's 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 the price of being famous, Bernie Sanders. Right, writes a best-selling book. Right? But here's the deal. Right? Here's what I'm trying to figure out: How is it that half the country can't grasp a simple message of income and wealth inequality? A simple, a simple. Uh, uh, idea of income and wealth inequality, and how to how to how to break it up, and how to return power to the people by through economic uh, economic means, right? An economic economic bill of rights. How I don't understand. I'm 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 shocked, and 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 uh, I feel less than because I can't grasp this concept. So I need you guys to help me understand something. So here's here's the one Bernie Sanders on um, on CNN with uh, Anderson Cooper. His mother is Gloria Vanderbilt. She just died, left him probably billions of dollars. Uh, how many billions of dollars is Anderson Cooper worth, right? Uh, Anderson Cooper, right? How much is this guy worth? All right, and why is he? Why why did he choose journalism? Why did CNN pick Anderson Cooper to be their star journalist? Because he speaks for the oligarchy. He speaks the language of money, because right, that's all he knows. He's a, he was a, as a young boy. He grew up in the Vanderbilt Mansion and the Vanderbilt, you know, money. Right? It's so much money. I mean, billions and billions of dollars of Vanderbilt money. Glory Vanderbilt jeans, right? Remember Vanderbilt jeans, man? I had a pair of this shit, right? So here's, here's Bernie Sanders. Here's Anis Cooper asking Bernie about something. Listen. Uh, the, in the, the speech today, um, you talk about a 21st century economic bill of rights. And a 21st century economic bill of rights. So this is dated a few days ago when Bernie gave his, his economic speech. But just, just listen. I know it's, it's so hard. I know it's so hard. I know Trump, Trump people, I know, just, just, Bite, bite, go here, Ugh, and bite your knuckle, and just try to learn something. Try to learn something. And you hearken back to FDR, and and are kind of pitching this as a continuation of FDR's legacy, even Martin Luther King Jr. Can you explain how right. this is pertinent to a vision of democratic socialism? Absolutely. Um, back in 1944, in a, a little remembered State of the Union speech. It's caught up, it was at the end of World War II, and, and Roosevelt said, look, we have a Bill of Rights in this country and we have a constitution, I'm paraphrasing him, which says that we have all kinds of great rights. We have freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of religion, all of that is great. But what we do not have is an economic Bill of Rights. We don't guarantee a decent standard of living to all of our people. That's what he said, and he died a year later. And in fact, that mantle has never really been picked up. So what I am saying today is that are we truly free, and this is in a sense what Roosevelt was saying, if you're going out and you're working 70 or 80 hours a week because the wages you're, living, you're working under are starvation wages, are you free if you can't afford to go to the doctor in the wealthiest country in the history of the world and you get sicker or maybe you die because you can't afford health insurance? Are you free if you are a young, bright person, but you can't afford to go to college, or you leave school fifty or hundred thousand dollars in debt, are you free if you're sleeping out on the street tonight? And there's a half a million Americans, including many veterans, are sleeping out on the street tonight. So what I am saying, picking up from Roosevelt, that in the wealthiest country in the history of the world, now is the time to finally say that economic rights are human rights that everybody in this country deserves a job at decent pay, that health care is a human right, that a full education is a human right, a clean environment is a human right, affordable housing is a human right, retirement security. We got 
millions of old people, senior citizens of this country, who literally cannot afford the prescription drugs they desperately need. It's, yeah, it, it's... A- right, before Anderson cuts him off, right? So, so freedom, he talked about, he's talking about freedom, freedom in America. Now, what is freedom? Freedom is freedom to speech, freedom to, to choose, freedom to choose a career, pursue the pursuit of happiness, right, is, is essentially freedom, right? But how can you be free... What Sanders is saying is, how can you be free? And again, just look at the ideas, not the, not the man, just the ideas. The idea that this politician is putting out there is, is spectacular, really. Uh, but the, the idea of freedom, right? How is it that you, how do you call yourself a free man when you work, you know, a job and a half, two jobs, and you could barely scrape by, and you, you spend, I don't know, 10, 12 hours a day overworked, underpaid, uh, if you're lucky enough to have a job, in something that you don't even like to do, right? And if you leave it, then what happens? Your whole life falls apart, right? You, 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 you know, you're, you, could be, you could end up homeless, you lose your apartment, you lose your, you know, there's something that, that uh, an Anderson Cooper has no concept of, no understanding of it at all. You see him just kind of stone face, but that's why he's there. He's there to speak the, the mind of the oligarch. Right, so, if, if, for example, if I was questioning Bernie Sanders, I would, I would be like, uh-huh, 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 yeah, because I know what he's talking about. I know, I know that, that uh, feeling of being uh, not free. Uh, I, I just think that's what I'm trying to understand. What, what I don't understand, right, so socialism, well, he, he talks about corporate socialism as well, but, but what I'm trying to understand is, like, like Trump, what is Trump? Uh, you watched the rally. I, I saw a piece of the rally, right, in Orlando. He, he rolls out his new uh, campaign, right? And he, it's just platitude after platitude, how great America has become since he took office, how the economy is booming since he took office, how we're on this trajectory to, to how awesome we're doing and how awesome we are, but it's not reflected in, in people's lives, uh, so what I'm trying to understand is how do people, how do people fall for it? Uh, how do people uh, believe what they're seeing? Because I see the way I see Trump is the way I can explain it. The best that I can explain it is is Trump is like the wrestler. He's he's wrest- he's a he's a major league wrestler, a a world class World Cup wrestler, right? But and everybody going to wrestling, it's a crowd. They fucking cheer it on, right? And, and, and everybody there knows it's fake, right? It's, it's a given. Here, check it out, right? So here's Hulk Hogan, right? You remember? Hey, fucking Hulk Hogan and, and uh, Andre the Giant. Watch this shit. 3,173 fans standing on their feet for remember? the foot gorilla. The irresistible force meeting the immovable object. We started the match, and out of nowhere, he throws that first punch. Whoa, I block him. I throw one. I throw two, and I go under him for the slam, and we fall backwards, exactly like I wrote it down. And the Hulkster unloaded, going for a slam. Oh, he almost got him up. Oh, oh. Exactly as I wrote it down, he said. Uh, it's all, it's fake, right? But, but the crowd loves it. Uh, it's like a Trump rally. People know, do they know it's fake? Do they know it's fake, I guess is what I'm trying to say. When, when Trump gets up there and says the economy is fantastic, everything's great, do, do they actually know it's fake? Do they know that they're watching, watching theater, or, or they they know it's they they know it's do they know it's fake, or are they that are they that duped into not knowing it's fake? Right? Because one is one is humorous. I mean, to think that to to, to view it as to view Trump as as a um, to view Trump as a as a sideshow as a as a world class wrestler. Coming out there, literally. I mean, he was literally in the ring with with wrestlers. Uh, is is one thing, but to to actually believe it is another, and that's that's what I'm trying to uh, having a hard time figuring out. So let's just watch a little Hulk Hogan, and we'll go back to Sanders. He collapsed. One, two. He pulled himself up by the ropes, and I'm waiting. He picks me up and slams me. Oh, slam! Andre picked him up with ease and hit him. He stood on me, walked over me with his foot. Exactly what was written down there. 
The whole match was built around Andre's limitations and Hulk Hogan working around Andre. Andre couldn't move. It's Stop. staged. The whole thing is staged is the point I'm trying to make. I had two great wrestlers. The crowd loves it. Whatever they do, it doesn't matter because they're, they're celebrity. They're, they're, they're so larger than life, right? Andre Giant is like seven feet, right? And Hulk Hogan, right? So is, what I'm trying to say is Trump, is Trump one of those guys, right, in, in the fact that, that Trump, Trump is uh, able to convince people that what is real isn't real and what is fake is isn't fake right like is that is that what's going on because it cer certainly seems like that when when there's this vast income and wealth inequality and people's lives don't change but then their their world class wrestler comes out in front of them and tells them look how great everything is and they cheer and they and they rah 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 and millions of, you know 20,000 people fill a stadium and cheer him on it's just it's very profound right so 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 here's the the smear, right? So we we know that the the economy is is in shambles. One in seven on food stamps. Sixty percent of the country doesn't have four hundred dollars to their name. People living paycheck to paycheck, right? It's it's a you know it's a disaster, right? But people homelessness, right? People don't see it, right? So listen to listen to Bernie Sanders's argument and a, a beautiful beautiful uh, uh, explanation of what the smear is, socialism, right? We want socialism, right? That's what people want. They want socialism. Well, sort of. People sort of want to, 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 pro, to take part in the prosperity of this country rather than the 1% taking it all. Now, why is that so hard to understand? Why is that? The cat is speaking. Why is that so so complicated to understand, right? So here, 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 Bernie he explains that we are a socialist nation, but not not for you and I, right? But for the corporations, right? Corporate socialism. Listen to his explanation. I mean, you are you are leaning into democratic socialism. Now, obviously, everybody's known you're democratic socialist, but uh, I mean, you are clearly trying to sort of explain what your view of what that means to, uh, you know, an American population and many people who see, hear the socialism part, right. maybe not the democratic part, and you know President Trump ultimately will be yell yelling Venezuela at you as much as possible. Yeah, well, that's exactly the point. And the other point that I made today is that, in fact, people like Donald Trump are also socialists, except they are corporate socialists. They are prepared and do provide hundreds of billions of dollars every single year in subsidies and tax breaks to large corporations and the wealthy. Anderson, you will remember very well the Wall Street bailout. Now, Wall Street is the epitome of unfettered capitalism. That's what they believe, except when their greed and illegal behavior nearly destroyed the economy. They went begging to the Congress. They were big time socialists and they said, we need federal help. Give us 700 billion from the treasury and trillions of dollars in low interest loans from the Federal Reserve. You got the fossil fuel industry today, which is literally destroying the planet. And they get billions of dollars in subsidies and tax breaks. You have Amazon, owned by the wealthiest person in this country, Jeff Bezos, made $11 billion last year. That's what Amazon made in profits. They didn't pay a nickel in federal income taxes. So, in fact, you got Donald Trump himself, as part of his housing endeavors, received tens and tens of millions of dollars in subsidies and tax breaks. So, so you do have socialism in this country, except, as Martin Luther King reminded us, it's socialism for the very rich and unfettered individualism for the poor. Talk wow, right? So there's the explanation, right? It's it, We have this system of of corporate socialism, where rich people get all the, all the breaks, right? Oh, we're in trouble, and we get bailed out, we get a loan, we get, we get all, our, all our needs taken care of. But if you are, are, are in a jam, the, the, the same rules don't apply. The 99% of the people, it doesn't apply, right? 3% of, there's, there's only, what's this, the, the, the number? There's three people in this country, three families, control have more wealth than 150 million people in this country, right? That all of the new wealth in the last, 
in the last 30, 35 years goes to the top 1%. Right? Those are the facts. Those are the, the indisputable facts. But why, why is it that people fall victim to the theater? They fall victim to the, the pro wrestler, Mr. Trump, right? Why is that? What is the, what is the, what is the mechanism by which people believe it is what I, is what I guess I'm trying to, is what I'm trying to understand. So, you know, Mark Scante reporting, you know, and, uh, I, again, this is not a pitch for Bernie Sanders. It's not a pitch for Donald Trump. It's not a pitch for Tulsi Gabbard or, or, you know, Andrew Yang or anybody really. It's not a pitch for the democratic party. It's not a pitch for the Republican party. It's a pitch for ideas, right? People that uh, a guy like Sanders who has been presenting these ideas and has been doing it for 40 years, right? Right. And people will say, well, Bernie Sanders, and I even said this, I even believed this a long time ago. I said to myself, well, Bernie Sanders folded under pressure, right? He folded and he, he, I, I guess he, you know, he folded up his, uh, his, his tent and he went home. And not only that, but he, he gave through his support to one of the most evil, nasty, uh, vindicative politicians in the history of the world, right? <laughs> it's fucking Hillary Clinton, right? The devil herself. Uh, but what I say to what I say is this: Did did Bernie Sanders has Bernie Sanders really quit? Did Bernie Sanders really betray his people? He's on television right now with the same message, saying the same things. And Bernie Sanders fundamentally believes, and he's actually it's actually come out of his own mouth. He believes that. That it's not him. It has to be a, a swarm, a tsunami of people that caused the change. That just the president in himself is impotent. And Trump is proving that. Obama proved it in eight years. You know, uh, and Trump is, it's actually becoming, you know, rather dangerous now. Where he's, he's, he's surrounded by swamp creatures and he's starting to buy into the lies of war. Right? He's becoming a, a a war pig, right? You know, in a sense. But what I'm trying to understand is that how how people how people can can hear that that message that I just played you, uh, the the actual facts of a corporate socialist society that for thirty or forty years has sucked all the wealth out of the regular people, away from the regular people, and given it to a very very exclusive small amount of people. And how people can can tolerate that, how people will, how do they continue on knowing that, right? Is the smear of this, this word, this, this word socialism, right, that, that brings up communism and, and other evil, you know, evil doers from the past or evil empires, is it that, is it powerful enough to make people starve themselves to 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 become to to remain poor in a very wealthy nation that's what i'm trying to say and again this is not to i i believe that the elections are rigged and i don't think sanders has a legitimate a legitimate you know ability to win right however if millions of people do stand together and do rise up and do get the message, you know, and you have, for example, if you have a Trump and a, and a Bernie Sanders on the same stage where Sanders is delivering a message of income and wealth inequality and a, and a solution to that income and wealth inequality, and he has presented the solution. It's not just talk. It's actual, actual solutions of getting money out of politics, universal single-payer health care, bringing the cost of these insurgency wars down by half or, or, or a third, right? right? Pharmaceutical industrial complex, eliminate the, the insurance companies, break up the banks, right? The, the solution is there, right? There is a solution to the problem, but, but, it, but the problem is, the problem is that people are, uh, can't see the problem for some reason, that once identifying the problem, it somehow becomes unpatriotic, un-American to suggest that our way is not working anymore. Right? Almost like a shame. Maybe it's people are, are ashamed, you know, to say that, oh, I, I get food stamps. Oh, yeah, yeah, I work, uh, 
I, I, I haven't seen a I haven't seen a Saturday off of, uh, you know in, in a year. I I, for, I forgot I don't even talk to my kids anymore because I'm so busy. I, right, a vacation. I don't even know what that that means anymore. Right, I, that, I don't have time. I don't have time for anything anymore. I'm not a free. I'm not a free person. I all I have is the promise that someday I'll be free. That someday I will cash in my 401k, and I'll 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 sell my my assets, and then I'll be free. Then I'll be able to, or I'll someday I'll I'll get those that social social security check once a month, and then I'll be free, right? And slowly that's being taken away from people, right? When when does when does freedom never happens now in this scenario? Freedom happens later. It's the promise of a free. Uh, a, a free, you know, existence later, but not now. Right now, it's it's about keep the keep the money machine going. So, I hope that was helpful. You know, kindly include your comments. I read all. I read everybody's comments. I read them. I don't always comment because if I commented on every comment, then all I would do is sit here and comment. Right? I this is my this is my comment. I read. I read. I respond sometimes, and and then. And this is what happens when I read your comments. I, I, it triggers me to say, say what I'm saying right now, which is I genuinely don't understand how people can, can hold on to a, a failing system, right? Like, like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a boat going down, but people just cling to it, or it, it just, just doesn't. It still doesn't make sense to me. So, Marcus Conte reporting.